on your app for news today. A classifier with many European friends. Another young ambitious player who wants to go all the way. One of the tallest referees you will come across. And another self-assured player from England with ambition. And we round up a few items that have been in the news. Welcome. This is app for news. We are going to begin tonight all the way in Virginia, USA, and catch up with a familiar face to many in Europe from past tournaments. Hello, Donald, my friend. So good to see you, even if it's virtually. And I want to thank you for inviting me to be part of your program. I love the European Power Chair Football Association. And anytime I'm invited, to participate in a European Power Chair Football Association event. It's all of a sudden my favorite association. <laughs> uh, I do want to thank you for, for inviting me and for having me because uh, I have so many good friends um, through EPFA and um, I'm just, uh, I'm excited that you, that you invited me. So let me tell you a little bit um, about my background and how I got involved in the sport. I'm actually a faculty member with a background in exercise science. So my very first faculty position, my college had a youth program specifically designed for uh, young people with physical disabilities to be exposed to different sports and to become involved in different sports. And so actually, when I first started in, in power chair football, players didn't have to have a power chair to participate. We had these big, big, uh, plastic guards that players could attach to their manual wheelchair and or their power chair. And the game has come a long way. We used to play with this just massive ball, not a regulation soccer ball, not what is, that is used now. Um, but the game was so much slower when I first started. Uh, and the progress that's been made in 20 years is just is remarkable. Uh, but I was very fortunate um, faculty members don't necessarily get to choose their institution. They interview for different institutions. And um, I was just very passionate about the program that we offered and was lucky to get my first job there. And that's really how I became involved in uh, power chair soccer. And then in 2010, uh, there was a call, an open call application for people that would be interested in classification and becoming internationally classified uh, or internationally credential classifiers. And I was lucky enough to be selected for that. And that training was in Vancouver. And um, I've just been uh, so fortunate ever since. Uh, it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made because I just I love being part of this community and the relationships that I've been able to establish with people. Um, it's just it's hard to beat the positivity that's associated with power chair football. Um, I do know it's competitive and it's competitive um, during matches, but um, the the family atmosphere around the sport is uh, it's rewarding. And so I've, I've been very grateful and thankful. Um, to be a, a small part of, of, of this ecosystem, so to speak. Well, all the European tournaments have been fantastic. 
And to be honest, I've never been in a bad tournament. Uh, Paris was great. Um, I was at the uh, most recent Nations Cup uh, in Finland, which was unbelievable. And uh, Limerick was awesome. And uh, regardless of the, of the country, uh, every tournament I've been involved in has just been, has been fantastic. And again, it's not, it's not just the, the competition, um, but it's all the social activity that, that surrounds these events. So. Um, I would just say it's, you need to make sure you're consistent. And I think that's true of any official. Um, you want to make sure that you don't unfairly give any team an advantage and you have to be objective and you have to be, um, dispassionate when you're evaluating individuals. I'm sure a lot of a lot of you may not know, um, but the IPC, the International Paralympic Committee, um, there the Paralympic movement is based on equal opportunity. And so classification came about as a way to make sure players with different function could all participate together. Because what the Paralympic movement is all about is it wants to make sure not just people with the most function. Uh, have the opportunity to win, but that everybody has the opportunity to compete uh, and to win. And that's one of the things I really believe in. And that's one of the reasons why I value classification. It's nobody's fault how much impairment they have. And so it's not fair for somebody to be penalized just because they have less movement capability. And so classification to me, it maintains a spot, it keeps a spot so that even players with a very limited function can still be competitors and can still engage the sport and their teammates. And I'm a little bit off track, but, um, you know, I think the challenge of classification is to make sure you, you hold that steady and that you make sure everybody is classified to the best extent possible so that competition is as fair as possible from the get-go and the best teams actually win, not just uh, players with, with more function or, or, you know, an advantage from officiating. So I would say the relationships. Um, a lot of great people are involved in this sport and um, it's always a rewarding experience to engage with so many people uh, that are so positive and um, passionate about what they do. So, you know, to be honest, I love watching the games, but what excites me more about tournaments is that opportunity to spend days with people and, and meeting families and meeting players uh, because everybody has such a unique story, right? All, all the players in power chair football have such a different introduction to the sport and um, personalities are very different. And that's one of the, I think, one of the richer aspects of, of this particular sport. The players are so unique, their backgrounds are so different. Um, it's very different than most other sports I've known where uh, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of players are just very similar and, and come from the same cloth, so to speak. Uh, power chair football is a is a community for everybody, and and um, and I value that. I like that. Um, I, I I don't know if I have favorite players, but I do enjoy uh, I do enjoy seeing a lot of players uh, repetitively, and um, and again from from my from my vantage point. And it's cool just to be able to talk to people at a tournament. You know, uh, once you're out of the classification uh, setting, it's just neat to connect. Um, I really enjoy hearing about people's stories, uh, their families, how they got involved in the sport. So I don't know if there are any particular players that I admire, um, but there are a lot of players that I really enjoy being around and, and getting their feedback um, from a lot of different countries. So. You know, to be honest, Donald, this is a great question. 
Um, I hope to be part of the classification leadership team for a long time. Um, and right now, um, I'm leading the research uh, activities that are being used to ensure that power chair football stays compliant with the Paralympic movement and that um, it has the evidence-based classification it needs to be part of Paralympic Games uh, if that comes to fruition. So the IPC has very specific guidelines on what sports have to do. And so right now I'm the person who's leading that uh, through my institution. And we've spent three years on this project so far, and we have just completed, well, we're in phase three out of five, and um, it's going really well. Uh, I've been presenting this work all around the world, mostly virtual the last year, but nonetheless, uh, people all around the world are hearing what power soccer is doing or power chair football is doing um, to make sure they're compliant with IPC requirements for classification. And I do want to thank, I do want to thank all the players um, that have helped us with some of these pilot tests and some of the, the research components. Um, because uh, whether you know it or not, you are, you know, you are shaping the sport in the future and your contribution to classification, your willingness to be classified, your willingness to participate in research projects. It's really setting the standard uh, for the future of the sport. And um, if power chair football becomes a Paralympic Games event, um, it'll be because of what the players did to, to help it get there. So uh, that's what I'm doing in the sport, outside of classifying. And um, I think that's it. I think that's all I have tonight, Donald. So I will a sign off, but I hope everybody is doing well, and I look forward to seeing all of you uh, as soon as possible, because I know everybody's ready to get back to it. Here we meet another highly competitive player from England, who has already tasted European power chair football with his club, and next has his sights set on getting into the England team. I first um, got involved in power chair football um, back when I started middle school. Um, I obviously had just gotten to the point where I couldn't play proper football anymore. So um, one of the PE teachers at my school came up to me and told me about the opportunity to play power chair football. At first I was a bit, I didn't really know what to think. Um, I don't obviously just stopped playing proper football so I was a bit angry, sad, disappointed I suppose so I wasn't too keen to do it first but then I went along to Percy Headley and got in the chair and straight away I knew that I definitely wanted to do power chair football. <laughs> Um, I've probably been involved now with in power chair football for about six to seven years now. Um, it's been a great experience over the years to learn how to play, learn different things and whatever. I play for Northern Thunder Power Chair football team and it is great because as a team we are all really close, we're all um, really good friends which um, helps us um, be as successful as possible. Playing in the National League for Thunder is um, a great achievement because we play the best clubs from across our country um, and it gives us as a team a great challenge. Um, because playing the best will, will make you a better player yourself, make your team better. Um, and because you have to learn to change the way you play and the tactics are different because every team is different.
I find playing competitive games in um, power check football really exciting. Um, I love, well, I just love anything. I'm quite competitive, so I get on the pitch. I like to help my team do the best I can for the team. If that's scoring the goals or assisting, um, yeah, it's just competitive games are fun. I normally play as the striker for Northern Thunder um, and I enjoy doing that because like anyone else I enjoy scoring goals um, and hopefully I always hope in every game that the goals I score can help us as a team to achieve our targets and to be as successful as possible. My most um, memorable goal was one that I scored um, against Middlesbrough. Um, it was my first game, proper game in the National League for Thunder. Um, first time down in Nottingham, I was feeling excited before, so it was good because when I got on the pitch, I always remember this one quite well because it's my first touch, first. Um, First touch, yeah. So, first touch, and I scored with it. Um, so it's always one that sticks by me. First goal. Um, and I'd probably say my most memorable game was in the 2018 EPFA Champions Cup. Um, it was the first game of the tournament. Um, it took us a long time as a team to get there. Um, but it was certainly worth it in the end. Um, the first game was against Aarhus Rolling Devils. Um, and um, we went 1-0 down. Um, and what was memorable about it was as soon as we went 1-0 down, we kind of realised, OK, we need to change the way we're playing a bit. So um, luckily enough, we got the ball going again and got back to playing the way we know we can and I um, luckily scored the first goal and then assisted the second goal for uh, my teammate Sam Smith um, and it's certainly a memorable game because it was my first game in the Champions Cup for me um, and I think playing the best European teams has helped me as a player improve um, and take my game to the next level and as a team we've improved since. My main ambition in the sport of power chair football is like <laughs> everyone's in England is to play for England um, and I hope if I train my best, if I play my best, that maybe someday in the future I can achieve this target. Uh, I'd say I admire quite a few players. Um, I admire Ed Common and Sam Smith because well, they're my teammates at Northern Thunder and obviously they play for England and which hopefully someday I might play alongside them. Um, I look up to all the England players really. Um, it's just, it's good to watch them, see what they do, see what I can learn from them, try and emulate the way they play and stuff. Um, and. I loved watching Momo from France, especially it was playing against them, playing against him was quite a, well, it was quite hard, so it was, and it was good to see him play, see how the French play. Um, and my 
my free time, spend most of the time like anyone else playing on my PlayStation. If I'm not doing that, I love spending time with my family, friends, just doing whatever I can with them, seeing them, um, especially during lockdown and COVID and stuff. It's good to speak and see my friends and stuff. Uh, my hopes um, for the rest of this year and beyond is, well, obviously it's been a bad last 18 months because of COVID. Um, it's been hard not playing, not doing loads of normal stuff that I would do in my normal life before COVID. Um, but obviously, I you know, hope for things to get back to normal soon. Um, and hopefully, it goes back to normal for... Um, football as well because it's been a long time since we've played competitive games we've obviously just started training again in the last few weeks um, so hopefully yeah, in the next few months things will get back to at least some kind of normal um, so we can get back to doing stuff in our daily lives and obviously playing, playing, playing power chair football We meet one of the tallest referees around, from France, and with a passion for power chair football and rugby. Alors, j'ai commencé à être impliqué euh, directement dans le foot fauteuil en 2016, avec le stage d'arbitrage euh, qui se déroulait au moment de, du rassemblement de l'équipe de France avec l'équipe d'Argentine et avec la participation des Grésil de Limoges. Donc du moment où j'ai obtenu mon diplôme d'arbitrage, je vais commencer à arbitrer dans les différentes divisions françaises, que ce soit de la première à la troisième division, à passer par la nationale. Et j'ai aussi eu l'opportunité d'arbitrer à l'étranger une première journée de championnat irlandaise à Dublin. Le premier souvenir de foot fauteuil que j'ai, en tout cas j'ai été impliqué, euh, ça restera le premier entraînement de mon frère au Montpellier Foot Fauteuil Club. Donc on était tout jeune, on devait avoir moins de 10 ans, et de le voir euh, s'épanouir euh, dans un sport collectif, de le voir s'éclater sur, sur le terrain euh, avec des coéquipiers, euh, ça restera un très bon souvenir pour moi. Alors ce que j'aime dans le sport en général, bon bien sûr il y a la compétition, avoir euh, avoir l'objectif de remporter euh, des titres, mais aussi le partage. Voilà, Une saison, ça se passe en tant que joueur, en tant qu'entraîneur, et même en tant qu'arbitre, euh, voilà, en partageant des émotions, que ce soit sur le terrain et en dehors. Et moi, en ayant joué au rugby, c'est ce que c'est ce qu'on nous apprend euh, depuis tout petit, voilà, c'est euh, le partage. Voilà, être, être solidaire avec euh, les personnes qui jouent avec toi. Et ce que je retrouve au foot fauteuil, voilà, c'est le partage, beaucoup sur les tournois, euh, de partager avec les différents acteurs. C'est très important et c'est ce que je retiendrai le plus, en tout cas, de, de ce, qui me pla ce qui me plaît et ce qui me plaît encore dans le sport. Personnellement, je vais essayer d'entreprendre, de reprendre le, le, le rugby, en tout cas la, la pratique du rugby, vu que j'avais arrêté pendant 2-3 ans. Et ensuite, pour parler bien sûr foot fauteuil, donc mon objectif personnel, ça va être de continuer à arbitrer le, le plus souvent possible des gros matchs, donc ça veut dire en première division, ou voilà, de continuer à arbitrer le plus souvent possible. Et après, si l'opportunité m'est donnée, ça serait euh, de pourquoi pas réitérer l'expérience que j'ai eue en Irlande, voilà, d'aller arbitrer à l'étranger. C'est toujours intéressant de, de pouvoir se confronter à d'autres joueurs, à une autre culture. Donc euh, voilà, mon, mon souhait, si vraiment, en termes sportifs, ça serait de continuer à arbitrer euh, voilà, des matchs de haut niveau et euh, d'aller euh, et de m'exporter euh, 
dans d'autres pays pour, pour voir ce qui se passe là-bas. Alors euh, non, j'ai pas de match euh, référentiel ou de match où j'ai le plus euh, aimé arbitrer. On va dire que c'est plutôt le contexte du match qui est plaisant. Donc par exemple, euh, j'ai eu la chance déjà d'arbitrer des matchs pour le, pour en tout cas pour les trois premières places en hein, première division française. Voilà, des matchs de Coupe de France également ou à élimination directe où on sait tous que c'est des matchs qui sont très tendus. Et également en Irlande. Euh, j'ai eu l'occasion d'arbitrer euh, des, des matchs comme Dublin Belfast voilà, où, où il y avait beaucoup d'internationaux irlandais et nord-irlandais nord des deux côtés donc euh, non c'est c'est surtout ces matchs en jeu qui sont plaisants à arbitrer ou en tout cas je pense que l'arbitre prend du plaisir à, à arbitrer des matchs qui sont tendus où il y a un enjeu fort Alors, je vais parler d'abord du rugby. Donc, du coup, le rugby, le, voilà, les, les joueurs que j'admire depuis tout petit, euh, c'est des joueurs comme Bakis Bota, Mamuka Gorgodze, Imanol euh, euh, Arinordoki. Voilà, c'est des joueurs qui euh, avaient une certaine aura sur le sur un terrain et qui euh, et qui démontraient une force physique incroyable. Et après, en termes de foot fauteuil, je dirais euh, voilà, de tous les joueurs que j'ai vus à peu près. Euh, euh, je dirais quand même que Brian, voilà, Brian m'a vraiment impressionné sur les matchs que j'ai pu arbitrer ou en tout cas où j'ai pu l'arbitrer, voilà, très fort euh, collectivement. Il y a des joueurs qui sont très très forts individuellement, mais je trouve que Brian euh, a cette force en plus de, voilà, de, 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 de faire des passes et de, et, de, et de mettre en situation ses coéquipiers, donc euh, je dirais euh, Brian. Durant mes temps libres, j'aime beaucoup, euh, j'aime beaucoup redescendre euh, chez mes parents, donc c'est-à-dire dans le sud de la France. Moi, j'habite actuellement à Lyon, et j'aime beaucoup voilà sortir, sortir avec les amis, euh, voilà rigoler, euh, passer, passer des bons moments. Et ce que j'aime beaucoup aussi, c'est voyager. Malheureusement, avec la Covid, euh, on a dû être un peu restreint avec ma, avec ma compagne. Et euh, donc du coup là ce qu'on va essayer de faire à la réouverture des, des différentes frontières ça va être de, de voyager le plus possible et d'aller tout couvrir d'autres pays. Alors euh, j'ai vécu euh, cette pandémie du Covid en tout cas pour, pour l'instant euh, en travaillant vu que je travaille dans un centre hospitalier à côté de Lyon, à sainte foy les lyon alors je suis enseigné en activité physique adaptée, donc euh, c'est la promotion de la santé euh, via le sport. Donc du coup je m'occupe euh, de personnes âgées en gériatrie. Donc je peux vous faire faire euh, le tour de ma salle. Donc voilà, donc euh, ne faites pas attention au désordre. Mais, mais voilà, je n'ai pas eu trop à me plaindre car euh, je n'ai pas vraiment vécu tous ces confinements. J'ai jamais eu de coupure sociale. Je me suis jamais, j'ai jamais été isolé, en sachant que tous les soirs en train du boulot, j'avais la, ma compagne à l'appartement la, à, à et j'avais toujours ce lien avec mes collègues de travail. Mais voilà, donc j'ai surtout travaillé euh, sur cette période-là avec euh, plus ou moins de réussite, vu que j'ai euh, été effectivement touché par ce Covid. Mais euh, après, voilà, non, là, avec le, les réouvertures euh, en ce moment en France, euh, en tout cas la réouverture totale qui est quasiment faite, je pense que ça va nous permettre, euh, en tout cas nous Français, de, de, de pouvoir souffler un petit peu et de ne plus trop penser euh, à cette pandémie qui euh, a été lourde pour chacun d'entre nous. We meet a second young player from England today, who has been rising steadily along his power chair football journey, and there is surely a lot more to come. I first got involved in power chair football at a charity event um, 
This was when I was quite young. I was taken to a charity event by my dad and he, um, we walked in, he saw the WFA stand and uh, this had a, like a football chair and a power chair football ball on it. And um, younger me wasn't fond of the idea of being in wheelchairs, but with some persuasion from my dad, he persuaded me to get in the chair. Um, I then got in the chair, scored a goal, and then fell in love with playing power chair football and haven't, t- haven't looked back since. Uh, I've been involved with power chair football since early 2012, so around nine years. So I played for a team called St George's Knights, who were founded in 2012. Uh, me, and my pl- me and my teammates play in the West Midlands Regional League and also the National Premiership. Um, the National Premiership is one of the hardest competitions you can compete in in England. It has um, all the best English players uh, in it, and you often find yourself battling against players who have proved themselves at a international level. Um, the regional league is uh, quite good. It's it's quite a difficult league. It's a great practice for the national league, being how difficult it is. It's often a time where we try new skills, new tactics, new techniques. Um, but with the regional league being as difficult as it is, it's often a good time to um, give players uh, confidence, give them more game time to build their confidence. For me, the most exciting aspect of this sport is the fast paced gameplay which the English teams have adopted. Um, it's more about precision passing. Um, I've watched other countries play their version of it and it's a lot of just battling constant up and down the pitch of just driving, no real passing. Um, and for me, the passing side of it is the most exciting side. Um, it's the most thrilling to watch, the most thrilling to participate in. For me, normally uh, in my team, I play as either centrally, I could play centrally in the pitch, or as a goalkeeper in a kind of four-out formation. Basically means we don't actually play goalkeeper, it's just like the fourth man. Um, this gives my team the advantage of having more players outfield, so having more options. Uh, it's actually very similar to the way that England played their EPFA uh, Nations Formation where they won, they they won, they beat the world champions of France. Um, only a few players can actually play with that four out. They have to have the ability of being confident in attack and being also being confident in defence. But one player that does this really well is um, Chris Gordon for England. As many players who play power chair football and normal football, our main aim is to represent our, our country. That's our ultimate goal. Um, I did this to some extent in uh, 2017. I got selected for the England under-16s um, for the Ep for Home Nations Cup. It was a competition with England, Ireland, Republic of Ireland, I'm pretty sure Scotland. Um, I remember scoring my first um, international goal there, first goal for England. Uh, I believe it was in my DB match as well, so that makes it better. For me, the player I most admire would be Marcus Harrison. He has a, um, a tenacious attitude towards himself. He always has a, has a desire to improve himself and others. Um, and I feel like this helps to evolve our sport into a higher standard of gameplay. Um, another player would be Chris Gordon. Um, 
this is because of his extreme levels of professionalism. Um, he like, always goes out his way for people. Um, it's just it's, it's just a, a, in general a nice guy, a really nice guy to talk to, get along. He's always trying to progress the sport as well. So internationally, the player I admired the most was Jerome Dumont. Remember, his, I think his name was. Uh, he was a, a guy who really pi pioneered the sport um, when it was in its early stages, and I think without him, our sport would be nowhere, where, nowhere near where it is now, and we wouldn't have the popularity that we have at the moment. I spend a lot of my time watching Pelletier football when I'm not actually playing it, um, but also I watch able-bodied football and a lot of other sports. Uh, if I'm not watching something, I'll probably be playing something like a, a games console or trying to socialise with friends now that we can do that because of COVID. Um, also, got recently um, gathered an interest in photography, uh, so I'm going to hope to try and improve my skills with that. Try and learn more about it. I hope life returns back to normal, uh, well, pre-COVID normal. Um, this would mean, obviously, back to power chair football, back to socialising with friends, basically trying to make up for everything that we've missed during the last year. A great announcement was made in England recently that after years of behind-the-scenes work, the FA Disability Cup Finals, at St George's Park, will be shown live on BT Sports on July 17. The Cup will be contested by Aspire and West Bromwich Albion, and will hopefully attract a new audience and awareness of a sport. We hope to catch up in the next step for news with some of the principals involved in this momentous day. Another momentous occasion did take place as was widely reported, when the first ever Spanish national team training squad met in Jan on 19th and 20th July. And it was wonderful, to see all the players at the training session wearing the Spanish national team jersey and listening to their coach as they worked hard over the two days. FIPFA recently made two appointments to the communications department, Ryan Sippel and Willy Pettigrew will now lead on the comms and raise the profile of power chair football around the world. We look forward to working with them both in the coming years. We would like to send our congratulations to Scotland's Craig Petey on his election to the Scottish Chef A Para Football Board, and also to Kieran Burns who appeared in the launch of Celtic Football Club's new away jersey, and ended up on their Celtic TV. We need to all work more to see mainstream football include football for all in their new jersey launches. Finally we just acknowledge once again, for those who may not have seen the social media comms, Adam McEvoy's great achievement in receiving a British Empire medal in the Queen's Birthday Honours list. Richly deserved for all his great work for many years. Remember get in contact with Epfa News at the email below and until next time, take care.